Happy Easter, everyone. This is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and welcome to this year's Easter special. And this year, we're going to be test driving a very special computer. This is the Gateway 2000 Destination, probably the most uh, exciting uh, computer that I got in my uh, haul from Knoxville, Tennessee. And I've been saving this for Easter just to make things a little more special. And so what we're going to do in this video is test it, see if it works, see what's on the uh, current install on the uh, SD card that the man who gave it to me had, and then we'll switch over to the uh, two original hard drives that came in this computer, see if there's anything on them, and then we'll install our own OS on here. Now I've got the uh, original keyboard slash mouse unit hooked up. I don't know if this one works. It had some battery corrosion. If it doesn't, I've got another one over here that should work. And unfortunately, that 30-some inch CRT television set that originally came with this, I do not have. And what made it unique was it had VGA out on it, or VGA in, I mean. So, uh, using it any other CRT television uh, would not be as proper with this. Even though this does have composite output on it, so that would work, it just seems nicer to use VGA. So, had to compromise. This isn't going to be a very popular decision, but at least for this video, I'm going to be using this little LCD television set, an insignia, that does have VGA input. So I figured, hey, it's still a TV with VGA on it, so it's we're, it's not that sacrilegious. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see if it turns on. I wonder if we can turn it on from the keyboard. Nope. Turn it on from this keyboard. Can't beat. Might just be a uh, power button for the keyboard itself, so we'll go ahead and turn it on from the computer. Never even used this TV before until now, so I don't know if this is going to work. I hear the fans spinning up. Let me turn it on, I wonder. Uh, power cable was loose on the TV. Floppy drive seek at least. So the computer has life. I think I just need to figure out how to use this TV. Okay, input. I don't know if that did anything or not. It would make things easy if I had the remote control for this TV, but I do not. Hmm. Let me try to figure this TV out. Okay, uh, two issues I ran into, both very simple and very stupid. The one, the power cord wasn't plugged in all the way, and two, I forgot to turn the power button on. <laughs> so right now I think we're uh, on the uh, antenna input, which I don't have an antenna hooked up to it. So let's uh, switch it to VGA. Just gotta figure out the buttons. All right. There we go. So we've got the newer Gateway logo on here. You know, it says Gateway 2000 on the plastic. Okay, we've got 64 megs of memory, 
the uh, SD card adapter is hooked up right now. Toshiba CD-ROM drive, uh, well DVD-ROM drive I should say. Now these are known to uh, not be the best so it may work, may not work. If it doesn't, no big deal. I have plenty of other black uh, DVD IDE drives we can throw in here that'll uh, that won't look too out of place in here. Let's see if it'll eject. Oh, oh, oh. Now this is cool. Gateway 2000 System Restoration CD. I'm not sure if this is the original CD for this particular gateway. Oh, maybe it is. It says Gateway Destination. Copyright 1999. So... I think this is what we'll be using to restore this computer with. I did download a CD from archive.org, but hey, if we got the original, we might as well use it. On well, the CD drive, uh, opens and closes good enough. Now, does this keyboard work? No, it does not. Does the other one work? Yes. Oh, we've got a Got a BIOS password. That's kind of irritating. Uh, there's probably a password clear jumper on the motherboard somewhere. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Okay, I did find the password clear jumper. I've already took care of that, but now we need to, uh, while we're in here, just See if we can replace that CMOS battery. Because it is dead. And we'll stick this new energizer in there. All right. Now we can put in our... Uh, date and time all right processor is at 233 megahertz that seems a little low to me I'm pretty sure that this is a Pentium 300 so we may have to change some multiplier settings in here since the battery died okay today is is currently 4.17 p.m. It is not January 1st, 1990. The date is March 25th. Uh, when you hit a wrong key, it doesn't forgive you. <laughs> March 25th, 2024. Yes, believe it or not, I'm not recording this on actual Easter Sunday. <laughs> Doing this ahead of time. Yes to plug and play OS. Resource configuration. I don't think we need to do any of that. Peripheral. I do want legacy USB support. see anywhere to adjust the uh, multiplier settings in here. Maybe this is supposed to be 233 megahertz. Huh. It's uh, bizarre. I saw somewhere in here it said uh, 300 megahertz. <laughs> but who knows? I've been wrong before. Oh, have I been wrong. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's save our changes. I'm 
My cat is in zoomy mode right now. <laughs> Getting into everything today. Not sure what size uh, SD card is in here right now. Should be booting into Windows now, presumably 98. With no splash screen, apparently. That's peculiar. <laughs> Hard drive LED was blinking, so it was doing something a while ago, but now it's stopped. This keyboard doesn't have uh, lights for the lock keys, so I can't tell if those are registering or not. Just try Control Alt Delete to see what it does. <laughs> And for those wondering why I'm not using a black uh, CRT computer monitor, that's because I don't, currently do not own one at the moment. They're all beige. Let's try this again. It's loading something. I just don't know what. There's nothing on the screen. <laughs> I'm assuming Windows is trying to load. Okay, now we've stopped. Oh, here we go. Okay, here's the splash screen, uh, Windows 98. That's what I expected to be on here, but I don't know why the screen was so blank for so long. It was kind of odd. Well, as long as it's working, I guess. <laughs> I'm I think that's supposed to be a tiled uh, background. New hardware found. Uh, what? It's acting like a, a key's being held down. Obviously it's not. What is going on here? Okay, I got a mouse cursor moving. This is not the best touchpad I've ever used. I'd like to say that. Okay, now the keyboard's not working, but the mouse is. A bunch of unknown devices. Uh, this might not be a gateway install. In fact, who knows, this might have come out of another computer. <laughs> Don't know what the deal is here. Seriously thinking this SD card was for another computer. So, we'll mess with that SD card later. Until then, let's see if we can uh, hook up the original spinning hard drives and see what's installed on there, if anything. Just take the SD card adapter out for now. Put that back in later. Plug 
these hard drives up. I know one is original, one is not. I'm thinking it's the uh, top one because you can't see it right from this angle, but the top one has normal looking screws like you'd find in a gateway. But the bottom one has torque screws like you'd find in a Compaq or a Macintosh. There we go. Put the lid back on. not easy. <laughs> okay, we'll just we'll just leave it like that for now. This is only going to be temporary. Spin it up. That didn't sound good. I lost booting. Let me see what size uh, SD card this is that was in here. 64 gig. That's a nice size for this computer. So I'll probably be reusing that in here. And we'll just wipe out that install because I don't think that was original to this system. Perhaps the uh, hard drives are empty. Let's go into the BIOS and just double check some stuff. And you hear them going. Okay, it's actually not picking up anything, so let me check my connections and jumpers and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I know what the issue is and it's not good. Let me turn the computer back on. I've only got this top drive hooked up, which I believe is master. I've only got, I've only got power hooked up to it. Listen to this. Listen closely. That's not a good sound. That is not a good sound. I think this hard drive is probably toast, and that's probably why he probably stuck an SD card adapter in here. The other hard drive, I don't know if it works or not. I think it was the slave drive. And of course, we're not going to boot. But while we're in here, look at all these... Uh, cards that are in here that are enormous. This here is the PCI video card, which I believe is a uh, one of those ATI uh, combo cards with the uh, VGA and uh, uh, RF input. It a, has a TV card in it. Of course, with this being for uh, a TV setup, that would make sense. I believe that's the sound card. Externally, this just has a game port, but this has to route out all route out to all this stuff right here on the back. And of course, there's our processor, modem, and some kind of card. I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't have any connections on the back of it. I'll have to check it out. So yeah, I think this hard drive is toast. 
But I guess we'll go ahead and put the SD card back in here and do a a, a factory restore. Might as well now. <laughs> okay, Curiosity got the better of me, so I went ahead and pulled out this mystery PCI card, and it's still a mystery in a way. It it just has a big chip that says uh, NEC Power VR. Let me Google that and see what this could be. I have a seeking suspicion what it might be, but let me just check for sure. Okay, my suspicion was completely wrong. According to this Wikipedia page, it is some kind of video accelerator card uh, for 3D hardware accelerating. It was a competitor to uh, 3D effects. Oh my gosh, the ice cream truck! Yes, that actually was an ice cream truck. Uh, it comes through our uh, apartment complex every now and then. So yeah, pause this if you want to read more. It's some kind of... Uh, Yep, there's the one we have. Video Logic Apocalypse 3DX. It would use the main 2D video card's memory as frame buffer over PCI. Interesting. I don't see any mention of the destination on here. I don't know if this was original to it or not. So that's very interesting. I'll have to give that a try. Okay, enough messing around. Let's get this computer uh, running like it should. Let's put this system restoration disk back in. Hopefully this drive works. At least it ejects and closes all right. Sounds normal, so that's a good sign. You know what, I think the boot, oh, uh, boot odor, uh, boot order, uh, needs to be adjusted. <laughs> yeah, boot order, uh, boot odor, uh, that's, uh, I've known a few people who, who wear boots that have had that. Set it for the CD-ROM to uh, boot first. Okay. Oh. Okay. Ah. I do not want a network boot. Besides, there's not even a network card in here. Change that to CD drive. There we go. I don't know why the CPU is showing up as 233 megahertz, though. That's, that just doesn't seem right for this kind of computer. It, I, I feel like it needs to be 300. But who knows? He's reading the disc, it looks like. We're trying to. Did it die? Or am I just being impatient, like I usually am? Okay, not a good sign the CD wound down. Hmm. 
peculiar. Okay, so the weirdness continues. Whenever I try to boot from a floppy disk or the CD, I can't get a picture on this TV. But watch what happens when I swap over to this uh, beige uh, gateway monitor. Everything back over here. Yeah. Hard to hook these up on the fly. This one works, and I, I don't understand why they're both. Uh, they both take standard VGA signals. Well, this kind of uh, upsets my plans of using a TV with this. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, come up with another solution because I don't want to use this beige uh, monitor with this. It just clashes too much. So, let me see if I can go find a uh, black. Uh, flat screen computer monitor to use with this as a compromise. Okay, I dug out this uh, standard issue Dell flat screen. It's not a CRT, it's not a TV, but hey, at least the color matches. But as we can see here, the floppy drive does indeed work. Do a directory command, and I'm thinking the CD drive does as well. Yes, it does. All right, let's uh, control alt delete it. That was a that was an unexpected turn of events. <laughs> Guess I'll be putting that TV back in the storage unit. Yeah, even on that TV, I wasn't getting the video BIOS screen either, so. What a weird thing. I wonder if it does it on other computers. Yeah, seems to be booting just fine. So, yep, both CD or DVD, I should say, drive and floppy drive are working, so we don't have to worry about replacing those. Okay, this system CD, the Windows 98 CD, and all contents included herein are protected by copyright laws and international copyright treaties, as well as other intellectual property laws and treaties. These software products are licensed and not sold by purchasing this set of you agreed to the above terms and conditions, as well as the end user license agreements of gateway included with these CDs. <gasps> well, there's your Easter entertainment for this year. Oh, space bar. Delete Windows and reinstall. That's the first option. And option two is erase hard drive and reinstall. I think we were going to want to go with option two. During the first stage of the restore process, your C drive will be erased. That's fine with me. There's nothing of value on there. Type yes to continue. Okay. Appears to be formatting the drive. I guess it's partitioned the way it should be. Full 64 gigs. Okay, copy and drivers. It's probably going to want a Windows 98 CD momentarily, so I will have to scrounge one of those up. And this is from early 1999. I do have a Gateway Windows 98 CD we can use. Only caveat is that it's a uh, disc for 98 first edition. But we can always upgrade it to second edition. Right, 
space bar to continue. I'm feeling a lot less stressful with this computer. <laughs> now that we seem to have everything working. It was the weirdest issue though with the TV, but enough on enough about that. <laughs> Boot from her disc. I think that's what we have to do. Yep. All right. Now this computer's from 1998, early 1998, and this computer's from early 1990, and the, this CD is from early 1999. I wonder if this is the actual CD that came with it. Or if that one on archive.org from 1998 is more era appropriate. Who knows? We can always experiment with the other one later. Okay, it's done copying the files. I'm not sure what it's doing now. Just have to wait and see. It sounds like it's about to eject it. It is a loud DVD drive, but I kind of like it. <laughs> Space War to continue. It's probably going to reboot. Or not. It's probably going to go into Windows 98 setup, probably. That's what it looks like. And again, shame this is first edition, but upgrading to second edition should be no issue at all. Also plan on adding a network card to this computer, make file transfers a little bit easier. Alright, it's gonna go through all this uh, good old stuff, so I will pause the video right here. And we'll see what it does on the other side. We just can't have nice things, can we? It's looking for a file that it can't find. It's not even telling me what it is. Hopefully it's not too necessary, and hopefully that's not the only one, and it's not the only one. Hey, that's what's going on. Hmm. Well, it's having trouble with all kinds of stuff. And these files must be necessary, of course. I just wanted a nice, simple experience. And this one cannot be skipped. So we're going to have to cancel Windows Setup. Okay, I just wasn't feeling quite right about using that Restore CD that came with this. For some reason, I just feel like it's not intended for this computer. So I went on ahead and uh, burned a copy of the uh, other one I, that I had found on archive.org. This one feels a bit more era appropriate, so we'll give this one a try. We will have better luck. Okay, it looks similar. Keyboard's not working. Weird. Huh. Okay, rebooting took care of that. So we will give this another try. Formatting. 
Looks like it's probably going to be the same process as the uh, newer CD. Alright, we know the grill by now. 98 disc in. Wait for it to spin up. Spacebar, and it should start copying, or it'll just restart. <laughs> I'll wait for this to copy over again. Remove CD, spacebar. Hopefully, uh, we get further this time. I think it got to about 25% before it was unable to read those CAD files for whatever reason. <laughs> I'd love to be able to actually use this computer today. And I can always try another, another copy of Windows 98. Alright, let's hope for the best. And here we go again. It's not able to copy those CAD files, so let me see if I can find another Windows 98 CD to try. Maybe this one just has issues. Okay, I've tried another uh, Windows 98 first edition CD, and this one seems to be working better. I don't know why they always have to honk their horn out there. But I think we're uh, on the other side now, and I think... Uh, I don't want to jinx myself here, but it looks like everything's going well finally, so we shall continue. All right, 100%, finally. <laughs> and all it took was a different CD. I guess this original CD has some kind of weird uh, problem. I can't explain that. <laughs> Okay, of course setup is not complete yet, it still has has some more stuff to do, but as long as it got the files copied, I think we're going to be okay. Alright, getting ready to run Windows for the first time. I, I still say this one is not as exciting as the Windows 95 version. That's just my personal opinion. Just wanting some information. <sighs> Tab key is not wanting to function. This is a very interesting keyboard, but a very problematic one at times, it seems. Can I get the touchpad to go? Yeah, just barely. This is not the best touchpad either. There we go. Still no tab key. Okay, I gotta scrounge up a first edition product key, so one moment, folks. Okay, that was a little more difficult than I thought, but I found one, and now we're uh, proceeding with the rest of the setup. And it's pretty much standard Windows 98 stuff from here, I suppose. All right, I think we're 
finally ready to go. It's done setting things up. As far as I know, it might have some gateway uh, goodies to install once we get into Windows. But we shall see. And again, we'll be upgrading this to second edition. How second edition is the best edition. Okay, I guess I'll uh, put my name in. Uh, this touchpad is terrible. He's got some drivers to install. I think it does. <laughs> okay, picked up the monitor, of course. Interesting font it's using, though, I have to say. This being first edition, we'll probably get the channel bar. Ooh, look at that cool gateway wallpaper. Rewind and you'll get to see it. <laughs> Decided to randomly reboot, but I'm sure that's part of the installation process. Nothing to be concerned about. It's just a tiny little uh, beeper on the uh, motherboard for a PC speaker, but it does seem to get pretty loud. Not getting any sound. Maybe the driver hasn't been installed yet. Destiview, whatever that is. Everything's uh, copied over, it looks like, as far as drivers are concerned. I'm still not getting any uh, sound, though, but it says here, it says to click here now for setup, so we will do just that. Okay, make sure the following information describes the device you connect to the TV input. Uh, we will go with other for now. Uh, this touchpad, I tell ya. <laughs> Stereo out. Uh, yep, I believe that's uh, what we're using at the moment. So maybe that will uh, get our sound working. Indicate whether you want to use the destination to control this device. Indicate the brand name of this device. Uh, well, I'm just using a Dell soundbar right now, so... <laughs> don't think that's going to do as much good. So I think for now we'll just tell it to don't use the destination to control it. Seems like the safest option. I don't have anything connected to composite at the moment, but we will be connecting something later. We'll just set it to other. This keyboard has a PS2 pass-through for an external PS2 mouse. I might have to uh, hook that up. I'm just going to go with other for everything for now. And none for that. With your destination system, you receive one free year of TV program listings that... 
It is completely useless in 2024. And I'm going to cancel that. Destination software is currently loading. Yay, I think. Whoa, uh, <laughs> it went automatically to the uh, RF, it looks like. Now, how do we get out of here? Okay, I hit the menu button on here. Oh, look at this. Isn't this nice? Gives me kind of a uh, Windows 8 vibe. Still no sound, and it concerns me that it's using the PC speaker, because a lot of times that means there's no driver installed. Let's check our device manager and hope for the best. Okay, there's a issue with the modem. Okay, and, and Sonic Soundscape, Vivio Plug and Play. There's an error there. Uh, it's an IRQ error. Of course it has to be the IRQ errors. And, uh... Hmm, STB Video Rage 2. Isn't that the, uh, 3D Accelerator card that we had in there? And for some reason, it's wanting to use Interrupt 5, which we need. Yeah. No conflicts. Yeah, right. Well, let me change it. Oh, I want to let me change it. This is... Okay, that is actually not the uh, 3D card. It is uh, actually the capture software. That's going to be a problem. thing is, IRQ5 is preferred for sound cards. I hate IRQ errors. Windows 98 is plug and play. Plug and play. It should be working, but it's not. So let me do some more off-camera troubleshooting, because that's what we do best here, it seems. Well, I fixed it. And it was the simplest solution. I just went into the BIOS and turned off Plug and Play BIOS. Or Plug and Play whatever it was. Plug and Play OS, I think. And that fixed it. See, we got sound now. <laughs> And everything is working just fine. So that's all it was. <laughs> Oy. Well, let me go grab our uh, second edition CD and uh, make uh, this computer a little bit more sensible. Okay, we are uh, doing the upgrade to 98 second edition. Nothing really to see here. It's just the Standard Windows 98 setup with uh, better graphics, I guess you could say. So we'll just breeze on through this, through the video, and catch you on the other side. Okay, we have successfully upgraded to second edition. Much more stable version of Windows 98. And everything seems to be working fine. So let's try the... Uh, video capabilities of this destination. This is one of the things it was uh, designed to do. 
I bought this VCR last week off of Facebook Marketplace for only $10, and I haven't had a chance to test it yet. And why not test it with the <laughs> Gateway Destination? So, let me uh, untangle my composite cable. Let's, we'll plug it into the front here just to make things a little more accessible. Hopefully this will reach. Okay, I had to move it over a little bit because the cord was a little bit on the short side, but go ahead and turn the VCR on. Stick this tape in. These are some movies recorded off TV in 1982. So, uh, and it has commercials on it, so that's the part I'll play just to avoid copyright uh, strikes and all that good stuff. So, let's see what happens when we hit this AV button on the keyboard. Hit front AV. Alright, that looks like the uh, VCR's output. Let's hit play. There, look at that. All right, this works great. <laughs> That's actually pretty good picture quality. I can't believe I didn't think of this tape. This is the uh, Packard Bell 286 setup video. So it's just like my other VCR in there. This wouldn't be bad for uh, digitizing stuff. Um, maybe not the best solution, but not the worst either. Come on. There's a lot of tradition in these boxes. A tradition of technological excellence that spans more than 50 years. It began at a time when America relied on Packard Bell radios for information and entertainment. Then, Packard Bell pioneered television sets and stereophonic sound. And Packard Bell engineers helped launch America's space effort. Today, Packard Bell computer systems like yours are at work in the window here and in homes across the nation. Linking the system together is easy. Once you know what yes, each it component does. is, let's start with so the very do basics. Some multitasking. The computer system you've purchased is part of the new Packard Bell 286 series. It features a highly integrated motherboard for superior performance and a small footprint so it won't take up much desk space. Your 286 computer comes standard with a five and a quarter inch, 1.2 megabyte floppy disk drive. Your system may also have a three and a half inch, 1.44 megabyte floppy disk drive. There is also an internal hard disk drive for the permanent storage of information and data. This light, marked HDD, will indicate when the hard drive is... All right, that seems to work great. I'm, that's actually kind of impressive. This uh, actually does really well. Okay, let's test out the uh, DVD playback on here. See if that works. I don't know if anything will automatically pop up or not. This is uh, digitized from a tape from 1997, so it's almost error appropriate for this computer. Hmm. Can 
tell if it's working or not. Let's go to DVD slash CD. Aha! That looks good. Describe a headache. You just want it gone. There's Tylenol, but two Advil work better on top headache pain. That looks there pretty good. Surgeon, but that's aspirin and the ingredient in Tylenol and caffeine. Just playing straight off the DVD that. drive. I'll go with Advil. It's gentle on my stomach, and nothing is proven to work better or last longer than Advil. Nothing. And from the makers of Advil, Children's Advil. It lowers fevers faster than Children's Tylenol and lasts almost twice as long. Children's Advil. This is a Big Mac. This is my dad, Jim Delegati. This is my dad, Jim Delegati. He created the world's greatest burger. Two all beef patty. There's cheese in there. Special sauce. Very special. Very secret. This is a mouth size meal. Right now, buy a drink and fries. Any drink, any fries, any size. And get a Big Mac for just 55 cents. 55 cents. To salute 1955, the year it all began. This is a very good idea. This won't be around forever. This sesame seed is bigger than my head. This is my McDonald's. Right, everything seems to be working great. We'll uh, have to try out something else on here, but that's going to have to wait till tomorrow because I need to uh, make a trip to my late parents' house to pick something up for this. And so we will resume tomorrow. Okay, it's actually several days later, and it's the day before Easter. The thing I wanted to do for this video, which was show off that... Uh, stereo uh, home theater receiver that came with this computer uh, I'm not able to do because I don't have speaker wire. <laughs> I thought I did but I just simply don't so that's gonna have to wait for another video so we're just gonna continue using uh, what we've got here but uh, there is something I would like to show. Uh, let me bring up the TV Get it out of uh, RF mode. Switch it over to front AV. And look at that! I got my uh, got my Roku uh, hooked up to it, and we're going to we're going to attempt to uh, load up YouTube. Okay, let's try loading up one of my uh, YouTube videos. We'll do the 486 Gateway Restoration. Of course, it'll be letterboxed. Now, this is an old Roku, so it's probably going to struggle just a little bit. I keep it around because it has a Hello, composite output. For the nostalgia mall, and are you getting sick of the Gateway 2000s yet? <laughs> I'm not. I'm having a great time with these. So we're going to move on to our next one this week. This one being the Gateway 2000 4DX2 66B. This is the uh, one and only 486 that I got in this bundle, and I have already tested. Okay, now for something 4x3. This will come to us from my Plex server. This is something kind of obscure. Um, this is the uh, TV33 Tourist Guide Channel from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I recorded this on my trip down there back in 2005 on uh, VHS. And I'm hoping to upload it to my Retromercial Billy channel soon, so we'll give this a try. And this is an old Roku. Give it some time. Located in the Ocean Drive section of North Myrtle Beach. 
Right across is Beer Hole Plaza. Our Lewis and Jackson store has arrived on the Grand Strand. Quarry and Lynn Ford, five pounds of bread. So yeah, <laughs> you can actually hook a Roku up to this. That's pretty incredible. But let's tr try to check out some more of the computery aspects of this destination. Okay, I want to see how well that supposedly 3D accelerator card works on here. So let's try it out with Monster Truck Madness. The OG version. I'm Army Armstrong. Are you ready for Microsoft Monster Truck Madness? My full motion video works, <laughs> at least. Okay, moment of truth. All depends on if this can support OpenGL and or uh, uh, Direct3D. Okay, that's a good sign. It took those uh, settings for the 3D accelerator. Let's see how it looks. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. So it looks like, yeah, this can do decent 3D acceleration. Oh, that noise. Da -da -da. That works. All right, we're going to play some more uh, Monster Truck Madness. Uh, this time, Monster Truck Madness uh, 2. This one requires a little bit more horsepower, especially in the 3D department. So I want to see how this runs and looks compared to the original. reason there's no sound and that's because I have the sound off. That would make a difference. Oh there's a actually a setting here for Power VR. We're gonna have to give that a try. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. <laughs> Races. Let's see if this actually works.
Hey, that looks really good. Yeah, a little bit of flickering there, but not a deal breaker. Might need a driver update. Very impressive. This computer has a little bit more horsepower than I expected it to. See, a Power VR seems to work just fine on here. And I didn't know uh, Monster Truck Madness 2 natively supported it. So that is really good news. Now, I've been dreading this. We need to test the uh, DOS compatibility of this computer. And here's why I'm concerned about that. Just a reminder, we're going to Properties, and Device Manager, and Sonic Soundscape. These are notoriously bad for its ad-lib emulation. And so I've got S Sky Roads on a disc, not Sky Roads Christmas Special, the original Sky Roads. I don't think I've ever played it on here before, but it has the same music as the Christmas one. And let's just hear how bad this is going to be. And the sad thing about this computer is, is because of the way it's designed with all the video hardware and all that good stuff. You can't really upgrade the sound card on here, so we're going to be stuck with the Insonic soundscape, unfortunately. Okay, get your ears ready, folks. This ain't going to be pretty. For some reason, the monitor doesn't like this game. Huh. Wonder why the, uh... I think, uh, <laughs> something went completely haywire. Okay, the video works in real mode DOS, but unfortunately we don't have sound. I don't think we have uh, sound drivers installed, which is unfortunate. So yeah, this may not be the most ideal computer for DOS gaming, unfortunately. It's limited by the uh, sound card it appears to be, and weird video modes, all that good stuff. Okay, suddenly we have the uh, channel bar on the side. Now I'm going to have to disable the destination software from loading at startup every time. That gets... Uh, kind of in the way at times. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, we're going to try one more uh, DOS game. This one being uh, Commander Keen 4. Goodbye Galaxy, I believe it is. And hopefully the monitor won't freak out on this one. the issue is why it, it why DOS is putting out uh these DOS boxes are putting out weird uh, uh video signals I'm not even sure if sounds working I oh, can't even uh, bring up the windows men the start menu Did it? Okay, good. It, sound card's still working. If I take it down to 60. With that said, I wonder if Sky Roads will work now. Nope. And you can tell anyway that the, the music's not going to be very good either. So yeah, I don't know what kind of video signal it puts out when it loads a, a DOS game, but it this monitor doesn't like it. <laughs> so I think this computer will be regulated only to Windows gaming, it looks like. DOS is just going to be out of the question, <laughs> so... That's unfortunate. But anyway, I hope you uh, did enjoy this video. There were a few things uh, I really wish I could have shown off better in this video, like uh, it being on a real TV. I do have uh, another compromise I might try in another video. I haven't tried it yet, but this uh, VJ to HDMI converter. I'm going to see if I can hook it up to my 4K TV uh, over there. Maybe that will uh, work. At least it'll be hooked up to a TV, even though it's a 4K flat screen. But anyway, uh, that didn't work. Uh, and I wish I could have uh, shown the uh, stereo receiver with uh, the really good speakers and everything. But again, I don't have the right wires to do that with, but I do hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless, and happy Easter once again, and until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Hello. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and X. You may also support me on Patreon if you'd like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.